is the Venom Films Podcast. Coming up to today's episode, we talk to Justin Miller about hit film, vlogging, and all stuff filmmaking. What's up guys, Elliot here, and welcome back to episode 4 of the Venom Films Podcast. In today's video, I'm joined by Justin Miller, and we're going to be talking about vlogging and all the other cool stuff as well. So yeah, the first question I guess is, what inspired you to start your YouTube channel? So, um, when I was probably, I want to say 12, I started watching this YouTuber, his name's Josh Katz. Um, he made vlogs, and I was like, wow, that's really cool. So I wanted to start doing that, and, um... Some of my earlier stuff was not very great, but that's sort of what inspired me to start doing it. Then I realized that I really liked doing it, so um, I just kept going with it. So when you started, do you just like, was it vlogs you started out with doing straight away? Was that what you wanted to do? Because I know you do some tutorials now on HitFilm. Um, I originally started off just doing vlogs, and I didn't really like it because I wasn't getting much traction. And so I was like, maybe I should start doing tutorials. And I actually started watching Aiden Robbins, um, or Digital Blast, and... That's sort of like sort of where I learned how to do tutorials from. Yeah, he's one of the people who inspires me, I think, because I changed how my content is now on my channel, and I think his style of videos, I think, is kind of he's kind of set the benchmark now for tutorials on hit film on this YouTube, and I think yeah, he is definitely one of the most influential people on the hit film YouTube platform at the moment. The next thing is, um, what are your favorite YouTubers? Then, if you said someone's inspired you, what are your favorite YouTubers? Who do you watch like every day? Every day, it normally, um, it jumps around between people. Um, Andrew James, I watch a lot, um, just because he's around the same age as me, and I just get a lot of inspiration from him. Um, Aiden Robbins, like I already said. Peter McKinnon, um, just some of like the generic like cinematic filmmakers. Um, I draw like a lot of inspiration from them. Um, and I'm trying to think who else. Um, Andreas Ham, I really like yeah. his videos too. I guess his style of filmmaking is a bit different because Although he doesn't upload very consistently, his videos are so such good quality that he doesn't need to do it because people will still watch and subscribe for that kind of content, won't they? Yeah, I mean, I've watched like his videos three or four times, like the same yeah. video. You can, you can, those videos can have that effect and you just keep going back and watching it. I don't know why, but it's just, they're so good, they're such good quality and it's taken, it must have taken him such a long time to make that you kind of forgive him for like uploading once every two months as the quality of the videos does make up for it. Yeah, that's how I feel about it yeah. too. Is like I'll go back and rewatch his videos multiple times. I guess another thing with smaller YouTubers now, it's either you have to upload consistently every day, or you have to do like put tons of effort in and do like one vlog every month that is like super super high quality. And I think that's how um, Andreas Hem does it. He has his like that uh, kind of like really high quality, but he doesn't upload that often. What is what's your opinion on? Do you think YouTubers should um, upload like? Smaller YouTubers should upload consistently, like every day or every week, or they should just do put lots of quality into like one vlog every two weeks or a month or whatever. Um, I say it depends on like the audience that you're trying to attract. If you just want to attract everyone, then I'd say try and upload consistently. Um, and just try and keep like as much content um that you can put out as like as often as you can because um the more content that you put out um the easier it is for you to gain subscribers and once you start gaining like the first 100 the second 100 is going to be so much easier than the first but if you are strictly just trying to get to like a specific niche of people then you're going to want to make sure that you just keep your quality really good but if you're uploading daily and you don't like your videos that much then don't upload them yeah i think that's one of the things i think because I was trying to upload weekly, I think the thing is, you can sometimes feel pressured to upload, so you don't maybe put as much, like, time and effort into the video and think about it as much if you think, like, oh, I have to upload by, next, like, tomorrow. But I guess if you don't really have, like, a schedule, per se, then you can put a lot more effort into them as you upload them once you're really happy with that video. Yeah, I try and keep, like, a consistent schedule of, like, when I upload. Like, if I... I try and upload a tutorial every Friday and a vlog every Monday. And a lot of times, I'll film a tutorial and I'll edit it and I'll be like, wow, I didn't really like this at, like, at all. And um, I'll just, like, not upload it. I mean, I have multiple tutorials and multiple vlogs that I haven't ever uploaded just because I didn't like them. Mm. One of the things I think is as well, once you... Um, I noticed when I'm editing something, like, if you do, like, a little... Like, a cinematic edit or something... When you edit it, because you like go through it like so many times, editing it to make it look perfect, you sometimes feel like it's not that good because you've because you've seen it so many times. It doesn't have that shock factor on you. 
However, once like yeah. when you have to sometimes watch it as you're like a new person to your channel who's never seen any of your videos before, and then I think it kind of makes it easier for you to like trust how good your videos are. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I definitely feel like that. Like I'll have like a full edit done, and I'll be like, "Wow, this doesn't look very good." But I'll upload it, and then I'll rewatch it later, and I'll be like, "I don't know why I didn't yeah. ever want to up like not upload it." Yeah. So I guess my next question kind of thing is, what would you say to yourself? To, if you had like your today's knowledge and what you've learned so far, what would you say to someone who's starting out vlogging and doing your kind of vlogging tutorial hybrid kind of channel kind of thing? Um, it's gonna sound really weird, but um, put the letterbox effect on a grade layer above your actual footage. Mm. Um, I can't I can't believe how many times I've seen people's edits. They're very cinematic, but what they do is they put the letterbox effect on their actual footage and it moves with the transitions and it doesn't look very good. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's kind of weird, but I just that just personally really bothers me, and I used to do it, so it's very aggravating for me to watch my videos and be like, "Wow, that doesn't look very yeah. good." But personally, if I could talk to myself like, like um, before I started getting better, I'd say lower your color grading because before I used to color grade my videos, and it would just look not very great. But pretty much that's it. Yeah, because that's one of the things I think that's quite kind of like about your videos. You have like you can watch your videos and you can tell it's your video because of the color grade. Can you just talk us how you develop like your kind of style of color grade, which kind of like the washed out shadowy kind of thing? Um, so what I did is I um, bought the starter pack for Hit Film, which includes just a LUT, um, like it's a LUT effect. So I went into Affinity Photo and I found a photo that I liked, and what I did is I just put it side by side with one of my photos and tried to copy the grade and then I downloaded like I saved the LUT that I made with the photo and that's what I used to apply it it's not any particular color grade I just saved the LUT if you guys want to get like a similar look um you can go to Kyler Holland's Selfie and you can download the KH LUT pack it's free it's very similar to what I use do you just add the LUT on top kind of thing yeah, yeah. I make a grade layer above all of my footage and then I put the LUT effect onto the grade. Yeah, so another question is, kind of like editing related is, how long does it actually take you to edit your average video vlog? How long How long would you say you spend in the editing stage of it? Um, oftentimes with vlogs, I don't really color grade it too often, so it only takes me around an hour to two hours, depending on like the length and if there's edits in it. The edits actually take the longest, besides like just like putting all the clips together, because for the most part, I don't have to color correct much because when I shoot, I try and get like the shot perfect um, the first time, so that way it saves me a lot of time. But normally I'd say like an hour to two hours, um, but like I said, having like the preset made for the LUT, that saves me a lot of time. Yeah, so how do you choose your music for your like videos? Do you like go on YouTube or do you like go on SoundCloud? Or where do you get them from, your music? So um, it depends on like the type of music. If I wanna get like a certain type of music, I actually have like a lot of folders inside of iTunes that are just like, copyright free future bass, copyright free electronic, whatever. And then um, if I'm just trying to find background music for a video, what I'll do is I'll just go on to Chilled Cow. They have like a copyright free live stream of like chill hip hop. And I'll just go onto the live stream and then I'll skip to like a random timestamp, find the song and then download it. Yeah. So what kind of, what kind of music do you look for for like a good vlogging music? Is it kind of like one that's got a nice strong beat, beat to it so you can cut on that? What kind of music do you look for? It's um mostly it's a lot of sampled type beats where it's um like lo-fi hip hop type stuff, but it also depends on like the scene that you're trying to set. If you want to like set like an exciting scene, um then you're gonna want to make sure that you pick like exciting music. But if you're just like walking around the house, oh I gotta do this, this, and this, then I'd prefer to use like chill music. But most of the time, that's just what it always is. Now, do you use much sound design, like putting in like sound effects over the top, or do you just normally leave it with just the music? So, um, I used to not use sound design like at all, like not even like during transitions, I wouldn't add whooshes or ambient noise or anything, but now I've started to use ambient noises, whooshes, stuff like that, and that's something that I really want to start using a lot more in my videos. I guess that's kind of like a thing now, because when you like look back at older YouTubers, you can kind of see the trend evolving, like, because like Peter McKinnon and kind of JR Alley, they're the people who are like really doing this kind of quite heavy um, sound effects over the top, so like whooshes, birds flapping, and I think that's really cool to see like how the transformation, because at first it was like the teal and orange kind of cinematic, and now it's going on to like sound design, which is a really cinematic feature of YouTube videos. 
Yeah, um, sound design is actually one of my favorite things to do because I'm also a music producer. So like me being able to like, if I put on a jacket, I'll actually go in and like record the sound of like the jacket ruffling and then I'll put that into the editing. I haven't really done that too often, but in the new vlog that's going up, it, there's going to be a little bit of sound design in it. Okay, so so you said you were a music producer. Let's just talk a bit about like that kind of thing and how it complements your filmmaking. Um, I... I'm a music producer. I don't really produce like um, much like electronic music, but I have like some knowledge on the topic. So it helps me a lot if I'm trying to put together like an edit and I need the music to stop at a certain point. I can go in and actually edit that sound just where it stops at a certain point. Or if I need beats yeah. to loop, I can go in and like make them loop. It just helps a lot with that. I normally don't do custom music for like my videos, um, but I have before and it's okay. Yeah, I guess that's a good skill to have, just if you need it, like, you can put your own, like, music, so it kind of gives it even more of your own unique style. Yeah. Um, my next question is, what camera gear do you use? Your camera, your lenses, your tripod, all that good stuff. Alright, so my setup is pretty basic. So for my camera, I use the Canon T3i, which hopefully I'll be upgrading to probably a Lumix camera. Um... For my microphone that I actually use on my camera, it is the Rode Vid Micro. It's an awesome microphone and it's really small and really cheap. For my lens, for vlogging, I use the Optica Fisheye. It's a 6.5mm f3.5. And this lens is great, um, but it's really distorted, so I just go into hit film and undistort it. Um, for my other lenses, I use the Yong Nuo 50mm f1.8. That's what I use for like a lot of like cinematic shots, and it's an awesome lens. It was only $50. And then for all my other cinematic shots, I use the 18 to 135 f3.5. Yes, I've noticed. Um, oops, sorry. I noticed you said you, you're wanting to get a Lumix camera. Now I've noticed a lot of like um, YouTube's actually going to the Lumix Panasonic range of like G7, G7, GH5. And like all like digital blasters gone through it well. What why why do you want to change from a Canon to a Panasonic? Canon is a great camera brand, however, they haven't been able to put 4K in any of their cameras. If Canon made a camera that was in 4K and they had 1080, 120 frames per second, I would pick that thing up as soon as I could. But they haven't and they probably won't. The latest camera that they put up did have 120 and 4K, however, it's a thousand dollars. And, well, it's not that great because the 4K is cropped 1.6 and it's also cropped two times. So, like, it's pretty much unusable. Um, so, that's why I think I'm switching mostly, is just because of the higher frame rates, so I can get better slow motion. That and Canon's image stabilization is not that great. Yeah, it's also quite cheap, aren't they, compared to, like, you get, you get more for, like, Say you were buying a Canon camera that was like, as you said, like 4K and it did like slow motion. You'd pay a lot more than if you're buying a Panasonic G8 5 or G7, which does the same thing. Yeah, I also, um, I kind of wish that Canon did make a camera because I really like Canon's color science. Um, that's what a lot of people say. And the reason why is just because it is like really, really, really nice looking. Half the time I don't even grade my vlogs because it looks so good straight out of camera. Yeah. So do you normally use a kind of flat picture profile? Do you just normally just, because, you know, like a flat picture pile, it can give you more scope to edit like the colors, or do you just have it just normal standard settings? Um, a lot of people turn down their contrast and stuff yeah. like that. Like they have it set to like negative five, negative five on sharpness, everything. I normally just keep it set at zero because it's like the perfect where it's not too punchy. So I can add color in if I need to, but it's also not so desaturated to where I have to like put in contrast yeah. in every single clip. So where do you think the future of your channel is going? Are you planning on doing more tutorials or more vlogs or like more both? Um, I'm gonna say more both. Um, hopefully I can put out more preset packs as I keep on getting subscribers. I've set the precedent um, to do a new preset pack every 100 subscriber milestone. And I think that that's like the best way to do it. So it's like an incentive for people to subscribe but hopefully more tutorials and more vlogs. I guess that's one of the things that like, you you were one of the first people I saw that actually did a, like, a transition preset pack, because in hit film, you can't really do a transition pack kind of thing preset as you're doing like After Effects or um, Premiere, because it's kind of like much harder to do, but you were one of the first people I saw actually do that. 
Yeah, I um I don't really know how I started doing it, but I remember just saving presets. Like I learned how to save presets. I really don't remember how. And then I was like, hey, it would be cool. Um, because for like one month I switched over to Final Cut, and I was like, these preset packs are awesome. I should do something like that. So I started doing something like that, and um, it turned out great. A lot of people have them, but the only issue is a lot of people haven't shared me when they've used my transition pack, and I'd really like them to so I could see it, like see what they made with it. Yeah, that's one of the cool things about doing like tutorials and stuff. You can see like your hard work paying off in inspiring other people to do to use your yeah. effects and your transitions. So you said like Peter McKinnon and all those other kind of YouTubers. What kind of YouTubers like kind of inspire your videos? Like what YouTubers inspire your music and that kind of thing? Um, it's definitely a lot of Aiden Robbins stuff. His is super good. Um, that's what mainly like inspires me because he uses similar yeah. editing software, and that's pretty much it. Do you plan on um, staying with Hipfilm or do you plan on like upgrading to Premiere maybe when you get like 10,000 subscribers and you're starting to get an income so you can actually like afford it monthly? I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to start switching over to Final Cut oh, for yeah. editing vlogs, but stay with Hipfilm for editing like cinematic stuff. Just because with Final Cut, when I had it for that one month, I could edit a vlog in 30 minutes instead of having to spend two hours editing the same video. Yeah. Um... So that's what I liked. It would just cut down on my editing time, especially for vlogs, because a lot of it isn't cinematic. But for cinematic stuff, I would still stick with HitFilm. Yeah, because that's one of the things with, like, I guess HitFilm is good because it's got lots of compositing effects and editing, but is it, it is, it's rather a slow kind of timeline process, isn't it? Because it's a lot of, like, it's not as easy, it's not as fluid as, like, um, Final Cut Pro and Premiere, is it? Yeah, that's what I, that's the one thing that yeah. I noticed is that the timeline doesn't move very smooth and it's very very laggy. I think it's just because it's not native to Apple. Mm. Um, I don't know if the same if it's the same thing for PC or not. Um, but that's what it's like on my computer specifically is that it's really laggy, especially when I'm like trying to scrub through the timeline. Yeah. It does not move like smooth at all. Yeah, all these things kind of like all these little things that um, like Final Cut Pro and App Premiere have over HitFilm kind of just it does slow it down quite a bit when you look at it like overall I think yeah yeah I definitely I didn't notice it before but not like once I switched over to Final Cut Pro just for like that one month I've realized that like having like a smooth flowing timeline with like a smooth flowing like everything it just is so much faster to edit with and um hopefully moving forward HitFilm will update it so that way it runs a bit faster and not as laggy and stuff which i think that they've started to work on because once i updated my computer it did move somewhat smoother but not completely smooth yeah i think that's one of the things with hitfilm at the moment i'm not really sure what direction like hitfilm is actually planning to move in if they're planning to move in like a direction which is more like and um, like more like compositing and more like vfx stuff or is it like more like kind of like editing and like vlogging kind of style I don't really know which way HitFilm's yeah. gonna go. Um, I'm, I'm thinking it's gonna be more towards like the person who's editing vlogs, yeah. because I think that's like what they're trying to capture in their market. Um, yeah. Just because with, they used to start like ha putting in more visual effects and like especially in the Express version, um, but I think that they're gonna start switching over to more like having like a better timeline yeah. and having like sort of like an After Effects, you can import presets directly. Yeah, that'd be good. And it'll automatically line up to the end of the footage. Yeah, to see That's like... That's what I'm hoping in the latest update. Yeah, that'd be really good to see like, so you can actually make proper presets for like a transition preset. So you just drag it onto the clips and it automatically does it. So you don't have to be like going thin of one clip, making it into a composite shot and then zooming that all in and that kind of stuff. That really does actually slow it down if you're doing that for like multiple shots. Yeah, that's like the only issue that I don't like about when I make these preset packs is that you have to line up the keyframes to the end of the footage. It just, it really kind of slows it mm. down. And it's kind of confusing, especially for people that are new to HitFilm. And it's, I, I can, like, I assume that it's probably pretty confusing for people. It's not confusing for me because I'm the one who made it, but I'm sure it is for other people. Yeah, because you're basically doing the effect twice, aren't you? You're the zoom in and then the zoom out. Yeah. yeah. And also, I think one of the other things that HitFilm needs to improve is, is like the color grading. Well, not much already, but some of the color grading features it does have are a bit old over like, they're not, some of, they are a bit not as advanced as the um, Final Cut or the Premiere color grading features, especially not in the Express version. 
Yeah, I definitely have noticed that too, is that it's really, really difficult to color grade in hit foam, yeah. especially with LUTs. Yeah. Like in, I know that in Premiere and in After Effects and all these other editing softwares, you can like go in and actually adjust the LUT. In hit foam, you just put on the LUT effect and that's it. You mm. can't control it at all, which is kind of disappointing. And I kind of wish I wouldn't, didn't spend the $10 to buy that feature. Yeah. Okay, so that is it for the episode four of the Venom Films podcast. This is the last episode in series one. Let me know what you think down in the description. I'll also leave a link to Justin Miller's YouTube channel. Definitely go and check that out. Some really, really interesting content. Definitely a YouTuber to watch in the future. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and until next time, bye.